Now let's take a look at the bigger picture. Ryan Payne is with me, president of Payne Capital Management. Ryan, great to see you. Always good to see you, Nicole. Can't say it's a record day today. In fact, we're seeing a sell-off. You see everybody with the, you know, flight to safety. Is it a? Is it sort of like a one-off? Is it a Friday? or is there a bigger underlying problem? Well, I think it's been the trend. We've seen the sell-off come on Fridays a lot lately, um, and it looks like the coronavirus is probably the main issue here. We don't know how severe it's going to be. We're seeing more cases, more of an outbreak, but you know, I don't want to discount the severity of it, but most virus outbreaks eventually are temporary. Um, and if you look at the big picture, you know, growth, trade is probably going to continue at some point. So I wouldn't be so short-sighted here to be selling your equities. Right. So you're more bullish at the moment, right? You think Shocking. the bullish market, you're watching money flows, real estate, technology. Give me a glimpse into some of those areas. Yeah, you see money going to the wrong place. And when investors do things in droves, they typically do it the wrong way. So you're seeing a lot of defensive positions. You just mentioned utilities. They now trade like tech stocks. They're trading like 20 times forward earnings. Uh, real estate the same way if you look at real estate investment trusts. Uh, if you look at their cash from operations, they're trading at a, at a premium to where they normally trade. Oh, I see. So getting a little lofty. Getting a little lofty. Exactly, Nicole. Right, I, I could see. have said better myself. Yes. Even, I mean, they do usually play, pay some great dividends, though. That's why people go in there, right? They do, but the rest of the world's paying great dividends right now, too. And you have things like energy stocks, financials that are paying, paying great dividends as well. And, you know, the valuations are a lot lower. And I would say here, as a smart investor, that stuff is selling off. I take advantage of buying those things as opposed to what's being bidded up. Right. So what about bond fund flows? What does that tell you? It scares me, Nicole. It scares me in a big way. And you're seeing huge money's going to the bond market right now. You had like 26 or 24 billion going last week to the taxable right. bond market, um, and very you know undiscerning. So I think that flight to safety or into bonds is not going to be pretty, especially if rates start to go up at some point. I don't think people realize what they're owning right now. So you have people running and, and doing the safe trade of bonds, but at the same time, we've seen tech stocks doing so great in 2019. So there's this somewhat confusing message about are things great or aren't they? Right, because I think right now investors are looking for the growth is. Obviously, growth stocks, tech stocks right. have done phenomenally well. I mean, you've just seen the revenue numbers come in, earnings numbers come in this last quarter. They're phenomenal. But again, you're getting to lofty valuations here, which mm -hmm. market can stay irrational longer than you say solvent. So I think it's good to have some money there. But I wouldn't overweight it because when those places start to fall apart or profits don't come in as expected, yeah. they're going to get hit hard. What's going on? Uh, you're watching Burke B, right? Or Berkshire Hathaway, and um, you know Warren Buffett, even his team, Charlie Munger. I mean, they basically they they've acknowledged they haven't had the greatest picks lately. Um, they've had some trying times, right, with some of their picks. Uh, Kraft being a big one that didn't yeah, do really well. Yeah, did not do particularly well. Wells Fargo has not been the uh, the best bank. They seem to always have bad news. Yeah. Um, but I think overall, it is a value play, and value has underperformed growth here. I mean, if the stock in general has done relatively well, they're sitting on a lot of cash right now, um, looking for acquisitions. And I think at this point, they probably need to allocate some more capital because they have a lot of money sitting in cash that's really not working for them. But Apple. Yeah, to give Warren credit, that was a tremendous pick, and the stock's up huge since they started building a position there. Right, and we're looking at the A shares, of course, very expensive, but if you want to be able to buy it yourself, you can go ahead and get the B shares, much more affordable. Um, but what's the beauty of a name like Berkshire Hathaway is you really get a diversification with that. Yeah, that is, right? It's one, not like you're getting one type of company. No, it's a good point. It is a conglomerate. You are getting some diversification there, um, which is not a bad, probably long-term hold. I'm, for my clients, we like to own the whole market, so I'll go with whole diversified portfolios, not necessarily individual stocks. Right. But I would say probably as a long-term play, if I'm going to pick Berkshire over buying Facebook, I probably would guess that Berkshire probably has a better long-term perspective. So you watch that. What about what's going on with oil? What do you think about oil? Is, you know, right now we're in the middle of winter, heating oil, but spring is coming soon enough. Yeah, nothing's really going right for oil because it's been a relatively warm winter right now. Uh, this trade war is putting a huge weight on it because if you look at a third of global demand in oil, it's from China. So the coronavirus put a huge wrench uh, in oil demand for the year. But I would argue that's probably not a bad buying opportunity right now because, again, at some point we're going to get past this. You know, growth's going to be on track again in China. Demand's going to go up for oil, and you're going to buy oil ch right. stocks right now very, very cheap. So would you get an ETF, for example, that would have many different names in the oil category in it? You can. You can buy the XLE, which is a spider. Right. I mean, it's basically buying Exxon and Chevron because it's capitalization weighted. That's where most of it's going to be, but you're getting two big multinationals. Now, if you're really right. brave and you're feeling like you really want to get diversified, I also think that buy some of the European names, like Royal Dutch right now pays 
over 6% on its dividend. Uh, Valuation is really cheap there. So I'd even go with a global energy fund as opposed to just buying U.S. energy. Ah, okay. And I know you mentioned technology. How about some of the high flyers? I mean, Tesla had a wild week. Space, right? Virgin Galactic had a wild week. I mean, what do you think about some of these momentum fast moving stocks? I mean, the valuations are absurd, right? I mean, at Tesla at this point, a lot of that's just speculation. You've had a lot of short covering. Um, I'm not bold enough to short the stock here, but I would think at this point it's probably overvalued. I mean, unless you're looking to go to the casino and bet on a right. position or two, maybe buy them. But fundamentally, I think they have to come down in price. Yeah, and what about a name like Virgin Galactic? I mean, same thing. It's not the kind of thing that you would jump into at this point. After I mean, they run, make no, no money. <laughs> right, so, right. Yeah, I think that's a pure spec trade. I mean, you can go to Atlantic City and probably the same odds if you're going to buy. Are you an IPO stocks. guy? Are you, are you an IPO guy, all those IPOs that we had from last year? Well, valuations there, too, have been extremely high, and it's been very hit or miss as well. Um, so personally, I like to wait, let the stock trade, and then you can see where it goes. But over the, typically over the next five years, IPOs typically underperform what the market does, so they typically come out overvalued. Right, so you got to be careful what you pick. Great exactly. to see you, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management. Thanks for joining us on the show.